Order. Urgent question. Siobhan McDonough. Uh, Mr Speaker, to ask the, uh, the Foreign and Commonwealth Office what representations this department has, his department has made to the Government of Sri Lanka regarding the safety of the 1,193 UNHCR refugees in Ngombo who have fled to Sri Lanka fleeing religious persecution from their countries and now fear for their safety following the terrible Easter Sunday bombings in Sri Lanka. Minister Mark Field. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Uh, following the Easter Sunday attacks in Sri Lanka, there have, as uh, the Honourable Lady will be aware, been reports of isolated incidents of violence and reports of intimidation and discrimination against Muslims, refugees and asylum seekers. In Ngombo, one of the suburbs to the north of Colombo, where the terrorist attacks took place, some 985 refugees and asylum seekers were forcibly displaced from their ordinary places of residence, according to UN figures. These refugees and asylum seekers, who are mostly of Pakistani origin, are being temporarily housed and protected to meet their immediate security and humanitarian needs. Our High Commission in Colombo, led by our outstanding High Commissioner, James Doris, is in contact with the Government uh, and UN agencies uh, to work towards a more sustainable uh, solution. And, of course, the UK, um, along with other partners, is monitoring that situation carefully. The UN is providing basic support for food, drinking water and immediate medical assistance and also coordinating with civil society to provide additional relief items. The humanitarian situation at the police station in the Gombo is a concern and the police themselves have so far been very welcoming but we do understand that the facilities there are insufficient. Staff and our High Commissioner are also assisting in advocating and coordinating with the Sri Lankan Government more generally to identify safe and secure relocation options to ensure protection of both refugees and asylum seekers. We also understand that processes are underway for some of the refugees to be resettled in third countries. Some 412 refugees are currently in the midst of a resettlement process of the UNHCR. Ministers and representatives of the UK Government have, of course, met with Sri Lankan counterparts over these past three weeks to, ruin, to reinforce the importance of inclusivity and respect for human rights in response to the East, Easter Sunday attacks, but also to underline the importance of Sri Lankans working together to avoid intercommunal tensions. And as, as I think uh, was brought up in the earlier uh, questions, I think we can all be uh, pleased, but without being complacent about it, that actually over these past three weeks uh, there has been a sense of unity within Sri Lanka as a whole. My right honourable friend, the Minister for Security and Economic Crime, visited Sri Lanka on the first and second, uh, or second and third of May, I should say, and met up with the President, the Prime Minister. Uh, military and religious leaders and senior government officials highlighting the importance of these points and also to talk uh, more generally about uh, security resilience. Lord Ahmed uh, from, the, from uh, the House of Lords FCA Minister and I have met with the Sri Lankan High Commissioner over the past fortnight to raise general concerns about refugees and minority rights in Sri Lanka. And Mr Speaker, if I may just say, I think all of us uh, would want to put on record uh, our grave concern about what, what happened. These were terrible, terrible events uh, and our commiserations go to all of those who remain affected and will be affected, I think, for some years to come uh, after these terrible attacks. Can I thank the Minister for his response? I'm sure that we all would like to send our heartfelt sympathy to the people of Sri Lanka and all of those mourning the loss of friends and family following the terrible Easter bombings. Now the spotlight of the media has turned, another tragedy is unfolding. 1,193 UNHCR refugees and asylum seekers, including 174 children, have led to three makeshift refugee camps in Ngombo, Pasyala Amadi Mosque, Ngombo Ahmed Mo Ahmadiyya Mosque and Ngombo Police Station. Hostility towards Muslims following the attacks has led to growing violence, leading the refugees and asylum seekers to se seek urgent safety. The condition of these camps are worryingly inhumane. There is a severe lack of food and water, minimal toilet facilities, no medical facilities or basic sanitary facilities. No walls or beds and not enough space to lie down. Over the bank holiday weekend, a child was born on the floor of one of these mosques. No doctor was present. Just this morning, latest updates indicated that more than one person had been taken uh, to hospital due to illness. 
Mr Speaker, these refugees and asylum seekers are largely from religious minorities who have suffered threats, attacks and persecution in their home countries. Many are Ahmadi Muslims who have fled Pakistan where their religious views may be punishable with death. Ahmadis identify as Muslims but do not believe that Muhammad was the final prophet sent to guide mankind, leading many of these refugees to be deemed non-Muslim in their home countries and face persecution because of their beliefs. Now, in Sri Lanka, they face an imminent threat to their safety because they are considered to be Muslims. Uh, the welfare of those in these makeshift camps is of immediate and serious concern, as is the possibility that these people will be forced to return to where they fled from. Would uh, the Minister um, use all in his power to expedite the resettlement of these UNHCR refugees to safe third countries? Minister. May I thank the Honourable Lady for Mitchum and Morton. Uh, she's very persistent. This is the third day running I know she has applied for for a UQ. I think uh, Robert the Bruce would be proud of her. If you don't succeed, try, try uh, again. But, but she's absolutely right. She makes a very serious point, uh, not least about the Ahmadi uh, Muslims and the terrible paradox of their situation, that uh, uh, whilst they are regarded as outcasts in much of the Muslim world here, they are finding themselves uh, very much at the forefront of, of some of the, the tensions. As I say, I think it is important that we don't over state the tension. I, I'm not in any way, um, uh, as I've said in my original statement, you know, we, we clearly, uh, as a High Commission on the ground and with our um, UNHCR partners, will do all, all that we can. But I think it is, I think, remarkable, given the history of um, intercommunal conflict within Sri Lanka, that uh, over these past three weeks there has been relatively little um, uh, that, that, uh, that has uh, led to direct concern. However, she is also quite right to say that, uh, that uh, according to UN figures, uh, with over uh, 1,698 asylum seekers and refugees uh, now having to be housed in three uh, unsatisfactory makeshift camps in the Nagombo police station uh, and at the two uh, mosques in the vicinity. Um, this clearly is not a sustainable position going uh, forward. May I just say this, that civil society contacts have also reported there have been other incidents of displacement and harassment of refugees in some other parts of, of Colombo. Um, we are clearly uh, will, are, are working together. And I should perhaps say it is important to recognise we work together with many other uh, high commissions and, uh, and embassies in that area, including the US, Can Canadian uh, and a number of European uh, high commissioners who have a, a strong uh, Sri Lankan diaspora that they also wish to represent.